Mrs. Martin Luther King Sr. has been shot to death in church. 16-year-old Rhonda Beckett tells about a plane crash in which three members of her family were lost at sea off Pismo Beach. She swam to shore. We have an exclusive interview. I'm Warren Olney in Channel 2's newsroom. I'll be right back with those stories and film reports on the Democratic Telethon, the Teapot Dome scandal, the gay liberation movement on the march, and a musical tribute to Duke Ellington. Going on vacation? On Continental Airlines, it starts the moment you step on board. We really move our tail for you. It's roomy. It's relaxing. It's delicious. To make your every wish come true. They can even arrange the things we forgot in the air. On Continental Airlines. Wow. Hot dogs and potato chips. We really move our tail for you. Continental Airlines, the proud bird with a golden tail. California grows more artichokes and grows them bigger than any other state. And savings grow bigger at California Federal Savings. Our two-account plan gives you a passbook account with big five and a quarter percent interest and lets you withdraw any time. And a certificate account guarantees even higher long-term interest on $1,000 or more. California Federal Savings, the perfect climate for savings growth. KNXT, Channel 2, Los Angeles. Good evening. Welcome to Channel 2's newsroom. There is sadness throughout the nation tonight over the fatal shooting of Mrs. Alberta King. She was the 70-year-old mother of slain civil rights leader Martin Luther King, Jr. Mrs. King was shot by a black gunman as she played the organ during morning services at Ebenezer Baptist Church in Atlanta. The gunman, identified as 21-year-old Marcus Chenault of Dayton, Ohio, emptied two pistols into the choir. Mrs. King and a deacon of the famed Red Brick Church were killed. A woman member of the congregation was wounded. Dr. Martin Luther King Sr., the pastor, witnessed the shooting, and tonight he is under treatment for shock. Chenault was booked on two counts of murder and other charges. Police quote him as saying he went to Atlanta under orders from his God to kill the Reverend King, but he shot Mrs. King because she was closer to where he was standing. Chenault is believed to have acted on his own, but police are checking on that aspect of the case. Tonight, a police guard has been posted around Dr. King's home and that of Coretta King, the widow of Martin Luther King, Jr. Security also has been tightened around the police building where Chenault is being held. Expressions of sadness come from all quarters. President Nixon, informed of the slaying in Yalta, called it a tragic and senseless act. Atlantic, Atlanta Mayor Maynard Jackson called for a period of mourning, peace, and reflection. Here in Los Angeles, the Democratic Telethon was going into its final stages when the news was received. Bob Navarro has a report on its effect. Well, Warren, the news that the mother of Martin Luther King Jr. had been shot and killed this morning caused the telethon some uneasy moments. It came only a few minutes after party chairman Robert Strauss had announced a $50 contribution from Martin Luther King Sr. All of a sudden, those terrible memories were loose again. The assassinations of the Kennedys, the shooting of Alabama Governor George Wallace, and of course the assassination of Martin Luther King Jr. in April of 1968. They were memories that made the festivities momentarily come to a stop. And there was concern on the part of some that today's shooting of Mrs. King, shown here at her son's funeral, would make it almost impossible to continue the appeals for money. Officials say it was the viewers themselves who solved the problem. Less than two hours after the shooting, callers began making pledges on behalf of the memory of the senior Mrs. King. The depression began to lift, and the appeals for money were stepped up again. Hi there, I'm your weather lady, Gail Warning. Tonight there are still dark clouds over our nation's capital, but a united storm of Americans is building up a high pressure front that's moving rapidly across to dispel them. Now if the drizzle of dollars earlier in the evening develops into the downpour we need, the sun will shine again all over America. By late afternoon, the telethon had taken on an atmosphere of jubilation. Party officials called it a success, estimating they had cleared some $3 million. And those terrible memories had been set aside once again to wait for the next senseless act of violence. Strange contrast, Bob. How do they know they're going to collect on these pledges for $7 million? Well, it's telethons are very sophisticated, and this one appeared to be even more sophisticated than the ones we've seen in the recent past. But they had, among other things, they have uh, facilities, uh, computer facilities, and also a verification center where any pledge above $50 is handed to people working the center. They, in turn, call back the viewer and 
double check the pledge in a series of ways and hoping this way to keep the practical joker out. Kind of a big brother uh, routine though. Big brother which apparently paid off well for him. Bob, thank you. The search continues off the coast near Pismo Beach for an Air Force officer and his six-year-old daughter. A light plane piloted by Lieutenant Colonel Ronald Beckett of Castle Air Force Base crashed into the ocean yesterday afternoon just after taking off. Officials say that Beckett's wife was killed in the crash. Another passenger, the family minister, was trapped in the wreckage. The only known survivor was 16-year-old Rhonda Beckett, who told her story to Ron Barber before she was released from the hospital today. It was the fog. My dad doesn't have the right kind of equipment in our plane to operate in fog, and we, he doesn't have an artificial horizon. And so the plane, we, you know, we went down. Did you start flying from clear weather and then uh, suddenly come upon the fog? No, there was fog at the airport, and we were informed that after we left the airport, there was immediate clear weather over the dunes, and that it would be clear. How did you get out of the wreckage? Uh, I don't really know. I just had my seatbelt on, and I, I was dragging down, so I ended my seatbelt and came up to the surface. Have you got any idea how far you had to swim before you got to shore? No, it was a long way. I would say about a mile. Did you think you saw or were you certain you saw your dad and your sister on some kind of raft or seat floating? My dad was still strapped in the pilot seat and my little sister was floundering around the water and I saw a seat, the back of one of the seats floating and so I went over and got it and brought it back to my dad and my little sister and they hung on to that and we all hung on to it for a while. A murder and kidnap suspect is still at large. Mr. Nixon is still in Yalta. We'll have those stories and reports on Ethiopia, Ellington, gays, and gasoline when we continue. Hey, this is the time when they show those commercials, right? So I bet it's the time when you run right out to the kitchen to eat. So run. Only this time, whatever you have, why don't you have it with this? A nice big glass of milk, because I bet you haven't had all the milk you should today, and milk really does have something for everybody. So come on, get the snack and the milk and hurry back or you know what? You might just miss another commercial. The Wishbone Clam Bake, for people who like good fun, good friends, and good food. For them, Wishbone Chunky Blue Cheese Dressing, brimming with chunks made with real blue cheese. Hearty chunks you can really see and really taste. Wishbone Chunky Blue Cheese Dressing, for people who really like salads. Put my John Hancock on a John Hancock life insurance policy. He put his John Hancock on a John Hancock for his family. When I put my John Hancock on a John Hancock, I felt secure because I know I'm dealing with a modern company with old-fashioned integrity. So put your John Hancock on a John Hancock for your family. To reintroduce you to the all-new pants galore, a dollar super sale. Now the dollar bill reigns supreme. Famous Manhattan athletic shirts or low-rise stretch briefs, one dollar. Famous label jumpsuits, only one dollar. Tank tops and funny t-shirts, one dollar. Top quality webbed fabric leather trim belts, one dollar. Pants galore's own special streaker t-shirts, one dollar. And many other one dollar specials. Don't miss pants galore's one dollar super sale. Sale ends Sunday, July 7th. Northern California police went to the air today without success in their search for suspected murderer and kidnapper John Card. The aerial search scanned the banks of the Sacramento River looking for the green and white camper belonging to Kay Skillen, taken hostage yesterday along with her two children. That kidnapping followed the killings of a Willows veterinarian, C.V. Griffiths, his wife and a daughter. Griffiths and his daughter were shot to death at their home. His wife was killed when their son escaped after she had cashed $5,000 in checks for Card. Card is thought to be armed with two heavy caliber pistols and a deer rifle. He's considered extremely dangerous, and authorities fear for his present hostages, the Skillen family. Medical authorities in Port Chester, New York, are trying to identify 24 young victims of an early morning nightclub fire. 13 of the dead were men, 11 women. 
Port Chester is located in a wealthy area on the New York-Connecticut border. An estimated 300 young people were in Gulliver's, a popular discotheque, when fire broke out in a men's clothing store next door. The leader of a rock group playing at the club advised patrons to leave, but survivors say that thick smoke belched in and the lights went out, causing the crowd to panic. All the victims died of smoke inhalation in a matter of minutes, or in some cases, seconds. The number of injured is estimated at about 30. Identification of the dead is difficult because some of the victims apparently were under the legal drinking age of 18 and carried false identification. They're getting to look like old friends, the heads of the world's two superpowers, President Nixon and Secretary Brezhnev, strolling and chatting and posing for photographers in Brezhnev's garden at Yalta on the shores of the Black Sea. Brezhnev, wearing a diamond-studded tie pin, was the more ebullient of the two, seating the president on a bench, he said. I hope that's not wet paint. Nixon's smile was described as sometimes forced. The two met for over seven hours, but made no progress on their major topic, nuclear controls, although Mr. Nixon said, we've made a lot of progress on other issues. They had lunch during a cruise on Brezhnev's 120-foot naval yacht while Mrs. Nixon visited the Swallow's Nest, a tiny castle built in 1912 on the cliffs above the sea. They told me it was just for lovers, Mrs. Nixon said, adding, I didn't bring mine with me. A lot of other Russians were in the neighborhood, which is said to look something like Southern California, complete with overcrowding. Mr. Nixon will make a televised speech to the Russian people on Tuesday night, then on Wednesday, when his plane stops to refuel at Caribou, Maine, he'll report to the American people. After that, a 4th of July weekend at Key Biscayne. Ethiopia <clears throat> no longer has a civilian government tonight. The army has arrested it. Emperor Haile Selassie's inner cabinet, members of the Crown Council, the richest and most powerful men in Ethiopia, are all under detention. Some of them may be dead. Addis Ababa is under curfew. Troops patrol its streets. Rifle fire has been heard. But the army says its revolt is against the ruling clique and not the emperor. Ethiopia has been in the grips of a massive famine for the past year at least and has been troubled by civilian unrest. Maria Perón has ple been pledged the support of the armed forces today as acting president of Argentina. The military chiefs have traditionally been foes of her ailing husband, 78-year-old Juan Perón. Various political parties and labor unions also vowed to support Mrs. Perón. Her assumption of the presidency is provided for in the Argentine constitution. Perón is under constant medical attention for a bronchial infection, which is aggravating an old heart condition. A former cabaret dancer, 43-year-old Mrs. Perone, is the first woman to act as president of any nation in the Western Hemisphere. It isn't on many calendars, but today is Gay Pride Day, an event proud gays like likened to the storming of the Bastille. A parade in Hollywood commemorated an event in New York's Greenwich Village five years ago, a day of massive resistance by gays herded into the village's Christopher Street by police raiding a bar. That bar topically named the Stonewall Inn. In the years since then, the gay liberation movement has been a vociferous facet of life and politics in the cities, as homosexuals have taken their lifestyle out of the closet. That style is a long way yet from routine acceptance. Today's parade was not well attended, but like Christopher Street, things are different today on Hollywood Boulevard. The men and women who work for you at Union Federal Savings gave up their weekend just to show you what we're made of. Not marble and tile, not computers and machines. It's the people, the individuals, who never forget you're a person, not a passbook number. See, we insist that caring for your savings must go beyond our professional skill and free services. At Union Federal, our interest is personal. We're here to help you help yourself. Union Federal Savings. Unbearable. The Qantas. 747 to Australia. Not any 747, but the 747B. And Qantas flies the most 747s to Australia to bother me the most. I hate Qantas. Have you made up your mind that you didn't want to spend more than $85 for a suit? Good. How would you like to be able to do this? Buy a suit that sells at $137 at Zachary All for $74. Well, right now you can do it. We're running a special on a whole range of suits at $74 that were in our inventory at $137. You don't have to pay $85. You can get the greatest suit in America for $74.
Come down and see us while we have them and the special is still on. Thank you. There's only one kind of blonde worth being, and that's a real blonde. If you weren't born one, be one with Clairol's Born Blonde. It's got a lightener and a toner with no peroxide, so you get a lot of blonde without a lot of bleach. Blonde color, like her blonde color. Soft and shining and real. Born Blonde is real blonde. It's like being born again. More and more people are violating the 55 mile an hour speed limit since the energy crisis has been postponed. But that doesn't mean they think it's a good idea. At least the Gallup poll shows that almost three quarters of the American people favor the low limit. That because of reductions in the number of people killed. 72% said they liked the limit, just 24% said they didn't. A lot of gasoline stations have been gradually getting the lead out. Starting tomorrow, the big ones are required to. Any station with sales of more than 200,000 gallons a year, about one third of all stations, is now under orders from the Environmental Protection Agency to offer lead-free gas. That because of the catalytic smog devices that will be installed on all of next year's cars. The music world lost one of its most esteemed and prolific members last month when Duke Ellington died at the age of 75. Today in the Hollywood Bowl, Los Angeles paid tribute to the composer of Satin Doll, Sophisticated Lady, Don't Get Around Much Anymore, Mood Indigo, and thousands more original music works. The musicians were men who used to play with the Duke. to follow. Nathan Roberts with sports is going to try. I would never try to follow the Duke. Midnight tonight is the official beginning of the National Football League players strike and the word from the players is that they are almost unanimously behind the walkout. The biggest question remaining is whether the rookies will be reporting to their new clubs. Veteran players are asking first-year men to honor the picket lines they'll be setting up and NFL owners say the rookies must report especially those who receive bonuses. In case you're still in doubt about who wants what in the dispute, the players are asking for what they call the freedom issues, the right to play with any team they want when their contracts are up, the right to veto trades. Also, they would like less restrictions during training camps. The owners say the players' demands would ruin the sport. So might a strike. The Dodgers again stopped the Giants at Candlestick Park today, sweeping the series with a 5-3 win. Los Angeles was leading 2-1 in the fifth when Steve Yeager hit a solo home run off giant starter Jim Barr. Yeager continues to make the most of every starting assignment he gets. You know, dwindling attendance in the Bay City would lead you to believe that fan interest in the Giants is way down, but don't tell it to this fan. The young standard bearer managed to spur San Francisco on for two runs in the bottom of the seventh, but the Dodgers came right back in the eighth on a hit by Davey Lopes and this home run from Bill Buckner that won the game. Los Angeles seems to find a new hero every game, unless you consider Mike Marshall, who has now appeared in 11 straight and counting. Iron Mike relieved winner Andy Messersmith in the eighth and gave up only one hit in two innings. Los Angeles flies on to Cincinnati, where they'll now take a day off to get ready for a four-game series with the second-place Reds. At Warren Harding's administration, he negotiated secret oil leases with oil man Harry Sinclair of New York and oil man Edward Doheny of Los Angeles, whom you see now. These leases gave Sinclair and Doheny the right to drill for oil on two government reserves, Elk Hills in California and Teapot Dome in Wyoming. To show his gratitude, Doheny promptly paid off Fall with a loan of $105,000 cash. Sinclair was even more grateful. He gave Fall $304,000 in cash and threw in a tidy packet of Liberty Bonds. His pockets full to overflowing, Fall resigned from Harding's cabinet in 1922 and returned to his New Mexico ranch where he made his neighbors envious by making expensive property investments. But back in Washington, the scandal was uncovered. There was an embarrassing Senate investigation, and then Fall, Sinclair, and Doheny were all indicted. But Doheny and Sinclair were cleared of bribery charges. Sinclair convicted only of contempt of court. Fall, however, didn't come out of it so lightly. 
After a long series of trials, mistrials, and appeals, justice caught up with him, by that time a sick old man. In 1931, Albert B. Fall was found guilty of accepting a bribe and was sent to jail for one year. It was the first time in American history that a former cabinet officer or officer of cabinet rank had been jailed as a criminal. President Nixon's first Attorney General, John Mitchell, was the next former cabinet member to be indicted. He's been acquitted once, but still faces trial.